Hello, everyone, and welcome to Journey to Success Radio, a show featuring people and companies who are making a positive contribution to the world. This show will help you learn how to apply success principles in every area of your life so that you can make the most out of your skills and talents and accomplish more of your goals. To find out more about the show, please visit www.journeytosuccessradio.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Journey to Success Radio Network. My name is Tom Tutal Cunningham. I am a resiliency expert and a Napoleon Hill Foundation certified instructor, helping people to think, speak, and act positively through the many and varied challenges of life. You can find out more about me in this interview at my website, which is Tom, the number two, and Tall. T-A-L-L dot com, tom dot com. I am excited for my guest today is Colin Gilmartin. Colin is an amazing friend. He's uh, uh, just released his book today, Dream Training, which I purchased a copy of. I got to read a pre-production copy last year or the year before, and I am uber excited. Colin is... Uh, MBA, finance and accounting, uh, professional international business coach living and working in New Orleans. As I said, he recently authored a book called Dream Training, a practical guide for today's youth to achieve their dreams through Lifestyle Entrepreneur Press. He has a United States Soccer Federation A license, a USSF National Youth License, a Scottish A Intro License, and a UEFA B Coaching License. He's also finishing up his requirements to become a Napoleon Hill Certified Instructor. He currently coaches and teaches youngsters aged 6 to 18 at the Louisiana Fire Soccer Club of New Orleans, and his dream is to deliver 75,000 dream training books to every 8 to 14 year old in the city of New Orleans. Not a small goal, but certainly a possible one. Welcome to the show today, Colin. Thank you so much, Tom. I am super excited. I think back to the first time that I met you were in Ireland, and I'm excited about this book and to see that uh, when man plans, God giggles, right? So I'm right. finally <laughs> putting this thing out today, right? And uh, right. after so after many attempts, and yeah. it's just it's all it's been about how to how to really look at these circumstances, you know, and and everything is is about uh is is learning these days. So I'm exactly. just super excited to be here to talk to you, my friend, and uh, just to have one of these <laughs> one of these chats we always have, right? Exactly, exactly. So let's get into it. Uh, uh, I know your history, and I saw your talk in Ireland, and I know how you come to write the book and why you came to write the book. And mm-hmm. sometimes our our bad examples in life can be good examples for our other people. And so what makes the book so special? What was the thinking behind it? I know it, but let's share it with our audience. Well, you know the it was it was things coming together, right? It was it was getting a copy of the law Napoleon Hill's Law of Success and then going through this and really feeling like man, Napoleon Hill wrote this book for me to read right now. <laughs> you know, and that was just uh it was uh it was awe inspiring, I think. Um you know, and then and then the study you know, I think I'm in chapter two or three after I get through the mastermind and then the chapter on self-confidence, and I said to myself, man, who needs these principles right now in today's world? And mm-hmm. I said, I know I'm standing probably first <laughs> I'm first in line, I think. But I said, the kids that I work with, the kids that I coach, um, they, they would – they need these principles um, because I just think – when, when Napoleon Hill spent 25 years of his life researching and uh, putting things in and taking things out, I mean, he was doing this, you know, so that I could better grasp these ideas and put them in a language that a young kid could understand. 
Mm. And so this was the that was the start of it. Excellent. That was the start of now, it. now I know that the start of it also came because in your youth uh you had some challenges. You shared them freely when you spoke and I think you share them pretty freely and it's what kind of brought you around to uh why you wanted to write the book. Um Talk about that a little bit because our challenges in life, as I said, can often be a, uh, an example or an inspiration to others. And uh, yours right. was for me and other people. My wife uh, works uh, in an industry where people that have char- challenges like you had uh, are. Yeah. And uh, one of her biggest goals is to help youth uh, as well in similar situations to what you were in. Yeah, I think it was... Uh you know, it was 1989, Tom, and and three. Uh, you know, when you put them in the when you when I talk about it, it's uh, man, it's just tough to go back and look at those things because it really was a dark time. <laughs> uh, you know, and the, it wasn't just a one moment thing. I tried to stretch the darkness out for as long as I possibly could, <laughs> and that was uh, that's what uh, really made it painful on 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 everyone around me, really. You know, but three different felony arrests in a in a eight month time frame, and man, I just didn't know what I was doing. Right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know. You know, I, I just think back to the, you know the judge saying, "What are you doing, Colin?" And mm-hmm. I'm like, "I don't know what I'm doing." Mm-hmm. And I, I just, you know, I, it took a long time to to look back and to just to study that time frame and say, "Man, I just had a lot of bad ideas in my mind." You know, I had a lot of things that just weren't right, and um, and I'm really, really blessed by the just the the fortune to manage to just kind of crawl out from underneath that. Right? I I had a chance to go. <laughs> I look at it now. Look, I had the opportunity to go to a a long term treatment program that I spent 16 months in that really helped me to, you know. Helped me to look at my life differently, you know. And of course, when I go back to court and the judge says, "Well, that's great. I didn't think you could do it, but you still have to pay your debt to society." Well, I did a four-month boot camp uh, for first-time nonviolent offenders at the New Hampshire State Prison, and that was the time that I got introduced to uh, Napoleon Hill's philosophy of individual achievement. It was actually the Science of Success course by Napoleon Hill. Mm. And um, I just remember going through this thing, and man, it was really, it was, uh, you know, it was a, uh, it was a different type of education, and it didn't stick right away because there were so many things going on. I just knew I had in my mind I wanted to do two things. I wanted to go back and I wanted to play college soccer, mm-hmm. and I wanted to get my driver's license back. And those are the things that you know. And if I look back and I say, hey, look, uh, you know, James Allen said. You know, the vision that you glorify in your mind, the ideal that you enthrone in your heart, this you will build by your life, and this you will become. Uh, these were things that I had to look back and say, well, these are the kind of things that I wanted to do. And if I get my mind set on it, I can do those things. And I look back and I say, I did go back and play college soccer. I did go back and get my driver's license. And that, it just doesn't work for these things. It works for all things. And so that was the that was the start of it. Nice, powerful story and exciting in that uh while you were still young you got back on the right path and you right. made us you made a significant effort. What did you say? Sixteen month program and then yeah. another program. And so right. you made you made significant changes and you are somewhat uh uh, blessed to go through that and change your life early because it, if you didn't it could have progressed and who knows where you would be now and so a great story for youth because there's a lot of youth as, as before you answered I had alluded to my wife works for a criminal defense lawyer and so many times she's comes home and it's like oh I, I just want to work with this person to get them out of the system and make sure they right. get their life on a good track and, and uh, so uh, I think this is one of the key uh, audiences for your book. Maybe youth that yeah. are experiencing some challenges, they need some hope that 
yeah, I am worth something and my life is worth something. And I think your book will really, really encourage them uh, to to make the changes that they need to make uh, as well. And well, so, I think it just well, allows you to evaluate those kind of things, Tom. You know, I mean, uh, I guess, well, what was I judging my life by at the time? I mean, I just didn't know, uh, you know, I look at Napoleon Hill's principle of going the extra mile. I'm thinking, man, I not, not only did I not want to go the extra mile, I'm trying to take as much as I can. Right, I, just, right. I just don't, I, I didn't have the idea right. I didn't right. know how the universe worked. I didn't know that, um, you know, if you want to, you know, if you if you if there are things that you want in your life that you provide service, and that's right. how things get done. And yes. I guess I back backed into this thing. You know, yes. I I know that I'm, when I'm getting myself out of trouble, I'm working myself back into to, to school, going back to college, and I'm, you know, it's really a whirlwind at the time. But I knew that I wanted to do. I wanted to go back to college, and I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to help someone who, uh, you know, might get themselves into the same kind of situation that, that I did. Now, you know, me saying that then, and then me saying that now, well, what's transpired? Well, there's the blueprint for it. Here's how, and it took a, an awful lot of study, and it was, you know, the learning is painful, right? Not just getting out of trouble, but just trying to figure out, you know, why do I do the things that I do? Yeah. Right, exactly, and uh, uh, better for people to learn from your lesson than repeat their lesson themselves in their life. And um, so I, re- I really, I really feel powerfully strong that uh, young people need this book, even if they're not in trouble or not challenged, have an right. amazing life, great parents, everything. Dream training is so important. So, why is having a dream so important? To a young person, then maybe you can expand on dream training because I I like that term uh, because we can have dreams, but we could have dreams of sitting at home with our thumb up our butt and having a Ferrari arrive in our driveway. But you better be training that dream a little better because that's a pretty sucky dream. So okay to have dreams, but train your dreams to be more specific, more precise, more time dated, uh, whatever it is. So train your dreams. What an amazing concept. So why is it yeah. so important? Well, I tell you, I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm just immersing myself in, in Napoleon Hill's philosophy and just books and tapes and anything to get my hands on. And, you know, I just, uh, I remember him telling the story of how he got his, uh, how he got his million dollar book title, Think and Grow Rich. <laughs> and he had been, I just, I just love that story. I just love yeah. him sitting, saying he sat on the edge of his bed and he had a talk with his subconscious mind. And he said, I need a million dollar book title and I need it tonight. You hear me? <laughs> right? And yeah, then he yeah. said his neighbor upstairs was banging on the floor. He thought he was quarreling with his wife having this <laughs> conversation. But it, this is how, you know, this is where it all started. It starts with an idea and it starts with, you know, really knowing what you want. Right. And what it does, uh, this dream part of it, it, it works. It's the same as a goal, um, you know, something that I want to do, be or have. But right. I, it brings order to my universe. That's what a dream does. It focuses me. It shows me. It gives me a start to shoot at. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest part I think. Um, but I think if we, you know, for me, I, I knew I wanted to, I wanted to put something out here that a young kid could, could grasp, could understand, could take this thing in any part of the world and do something absolutely stunning with it. And this is where, this is where it all started. Mm. So, if I have a dream, right, which is, which is the order, and then I have some sort of philosophy that goes with that, which I think, you know, think and grow rich. Law of success, mm-hmm. dream training, if you will. Mm-hmm. It brings about a step by step process by which I can move in the direction of the thing that I want. Mm-hmm. And that's where the training comes in, right? It's, right. It's, it's, it's conceive it, it's believe it, and then it's achieve it, right? So I have to put some action into it. So it gets me moving. And I think training is a word that's, you know, I'm always training my craft. You know, I think about me when I was, when I was a soccer player. Or now as a soccer coach, now as a, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, a greatness visionary. 
right? This is the kind of thing that I want to do. I want to give them actionable steps that I can, that they can do to move them in the direction of the dream that they want. And you know what? Once I do that, man, things start to move and come to me like, like it's tough to explain. It's hard to explain, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because I can't yeah, tell yeah. you exactly how this book was really written. I just knew I put a lot of time into it. I knew what I wanted. And if I hold on to that thing, it's kind of like planting, uh, you know, uh, uh, an acorn in the ground. I'm not going to get a pine tree, right? right. I'm not going to get a uh, a fern or a uh, a palm tree. I'm going to right. get an oak tree, right? right? Because once I put the seed in the ground, you know, all, you know, the minerals start to come to it. It starts to break through the surface of the earth and then the sun and the rain and the water, all the things it starts to attract that it needs to do the thing that it's supposed to do. Mm. And I'm like, when you I'm reading it, I've got to read it a thousand times just to get it, but right. it starts to make sense. I love it. And a cool idea here that I just came up with or thought is that a small percentage of adults realize the value of programming their subconscious mind, but an even smaller percentage of young people know the value of programming their subconscious mind because they're too young, they've not heard of it, they haven't practiced it long enough, even if they have. But uh, what you're talking about is the difference between daydreaming and programming your subconscious mind with focused dreams on a specific area uh, I think that's so vitally important. You and I know the value of it. Yeah. If you just tell your subconscious mind something 50 times every day for five years, eventually your subconscious is going to be like, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Let me go out here and find it for you. And there's, you know, and and I use a programming subconscious. You know, all of our thoughts sometimes will deviate over to the negative side a little bit about people, circumstances, whatever. But when I feel my thoughts going that way, I redirect them to my subconscious programming and spend more valuable time with my thoughts than thinking of some nuisance, idiotic thing that happened to me. And so the value of talking to your subconscious programming it, telling it what you want, being mm-hmm. specific about it, visualizing it, eventually your subconscious just like, okay, this guy's freaking right. serious. I got to go out there and otherwise he's going to keep annoying me for the next, you know, rest of his life. And there is extreme power in the subconscious. Wow. And so uh, I really like that idea of, oh, uh, you know, focusing so your good. Thoughts. Focusing your thoughts. Now, you dirty dog, you did a little thing like Napoleon Hill did in his book, Think and Grow Rich. You mm. put a secret in the book. Oh, yeah. You put a secret. Well, and this causes people to read a little more carefully because there's, right. there's that darn secret. Yeah, and it's in every part of this book. Right. right. So you spill know, the beans here. <laughs> Tell us what that secret is. The secret is that if you have something that you want and you write it down and you read it over and over and over again, you are going to get that thing, right? This is why it says be careful of what you uh, what you ask for, mm-hmm. you know, and I think back to what was going on in my conscious mind, right? I mean, I, sometimes I wanted to play basketball. Sometimes I wanted to play soccer. Sometimes I wanted to do this or that. Well, you know what? The universe can't conspire for my benefit if I flip-flop about the things that I want. Right. Right? It can't help me that way. And I look back on my life and I saw the confusion everywhere. Right? The fear, the doubt, the insecurity, the poor self-esteem. And I'm thinking, man, I, I know what happens when that is the case. And I see that in a lot of the young kids that I coach, Tom. Right? I see... The, I see the fear. I see them not wanting to reach out and stand out, right, to be their best self because mm-hmm. there's just a lot of things coming down the way for them. And so I made a determination that, you know, you know, when I found the secret, I was going to work it through to completion. I don't, I'm willing to trade my life for this idea, this concept of dream training, because I know how – of a benefit it can be and will be and is being mm. for the young people that I come into contact with. 
Amen, amen. Oh, now you got me. You're getting me excited here. <laughs> now, uh, when I read the first draft of this several years ago, I remember, haven't read the new one yet, I just bought it today, I remember that you used examples of people achieving goals and dreams that are more relevant to a youth today than Thomas Edison or Andrew Carnegie or some of these old fogies that maybe some young people aren't exactly sure of who they are or what they did in this day and age. And what a brilliant concept because you and I both know that musicians, actors, famous people, athletes have read Think and Grow Rich and uh, have put it into action in their lives. Bruce Lee, for instance, everybody knows. So many people know Bruce Lee. He was a huge fan of Think and Grow Rich. He wrote out his purpose statement. He achieved it. And so by using those examples that young people can be excited about, it makes Think and Grow Rich more relevant uh, for young people today. Are those stories in this book as well? Uh, Absolutely. And I think what was... You know, a little bit different than the first edition is I tried to, I tried to expand, uh, I guess the reach here of, of success and wanted to show a young person that, hey, look, this, this book here, Dream Chaining, it's not just for you, but it's a way for you to evaluate the people that are around you, right? Mm-hmm. And I just, I really feel strongly that the young people today are going to, you know, with the right tools, will be able to do some really incredible things. I mean, I look at the people that I, uh, uh, I guess the idea, the concept, Tom, um, was, hey, let's take, let's take Napoleon Hill's philosophy here of individual achievement. Let's get it into a language that a young kid can understand, and let's look at how. Let's evaluate today's, uh, you know, what people would call success, right? Mm -hmm. Oprah, Steve Jobs, uh, Bill Gates um, at Microsoft. uh, uh, Name some of your musicians. You love these musicians. I love otherwise. I love, yeah. And it's just when I start to look for greatness, I see it. I see it in their work. I see it in their effort. I see it in how they go to, you know, they go from city to city to Put on their to pound on their craft so that they can get you know they're right. they're working at this thing as well. Whether it's, you know Lionel Messi scoring goal after goal for right. his country Argentina or his soccer club Barcelona, or yep. whether it's Hope Solo winning the the Women's World Cup with the USA national team, or um, you know Hilary Swank uh, being a famous actress, or Muhammad Ali being the best boxer mm-hmm. in the world. And we talk about this power of the subconscious mind. And I think, you know, one of my favorite quotes in the book, he said, Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest. I said it long before I knew I was. <laughs> and I was just and I was just blown away when I saw that. Ooh, yeah. That is an amazing Long quote. before I knew I was. <laughs> I was telling the world I was. Wow. <laughs> Amazing, amazing, and so, so true, and uh, when you think of Muhammad Ali, you know he's the champion, because he told you at every opportunity, and then he had to fulfill it uh, to make sure uh, uh, that he did what he said, and so, so powerful, and those examples you talk about, athletes, musicians, success principles are success principles, Napoleon Hill's principles work, whether you're a band member, you're an athlete, you're an actor, Whatever you do, the success principles are the same. Now, Colin, this is a question we hadn't discussed, but I want to ask it because I know you'll love it. Um, Mm -hmm. You know how Napoleon Hill wrote in most of his books how the most powerful mastermind alliance is between a husband and a wife. He talked about Henry Ford. I think Henry Ford's wife was more instrumental in his success than he was. Thomas Edison's wife, apparently just an an amazing lady, and you just got married recently, and I can tell from just looking at your Facebook and all the things you guys do together that Carol is definitely a part of your mastermind Uh, group, and talk about how that makes a marriage even better when you can 
include them as a mastermind partner. But right. Not every marriage would work in a way that the husband or wife would be a good mastermind partner. But in your case, she is, and right. it's helping you a lot, isn't it? Well, I don't think I could do this thing, Tom, without without that. Um without the without the love and support um you know of Carol so and it was just uh, you know you talked about Edison and Ford and man the the story that Napoleon Hill talks about in his and um, the science of personal achievement was just stunning right mm-hmm. Henry Ford goes down to buy a you know he's he's trying to buy some parts for his engine and he, the guy said it was 30 bucks and he didn't have it he says uh, you know, can I charge it? He says, absolutely not. <laughs> he says, for you, Mr. Ford, it's cash or no sale. So he goes <laughs> home to talk to his wife, right? And this is, the, you, you can, I can feel the power of his wife, right? And, he, and, and she says, well, we, we've got money here. We've been saving and we're not, we're not to spend it on anything, but you could borrow against it and pay it back, right? Go down and give the man the $30 and tell him that we, that's what you want to do. Right, and it was just—it was amazing to see this. You hear, you look at the guy who changed the world, right? Henry Ford, and right. he needed the support of his wife to be able to do the things that he wanted to do, and he didn't know that. But that's the kind of power that you know the mastermind brings about. It and is. I'm glad so that you brought. I'm glad that you brought that up. It's. Uh, well, I knew you wouldn't have a problem bragging on Carol at all. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> 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 I knew that would she be pretty... She is beautiful uh, in all ways, shapes, and forms. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I knew you wouldn't have a problem answering that one pretty easily. Uh, and so, uh, how can this book fit into uh, young people's uh, extracurricular activities? So many that people are involved in sports, music, arts. Like, in this day and age, uh, there are so many extracurricular activities that parents get their kids into. But how can the book fit into those extracurricular activities? I think it fits in, um, you know, just to take a step back, Tom, you know, you you read the the, the coaching licenses, and I feel like I'm a pretty good coach. But there was a time when I'm going to the soccer field, and I'm thinking to myself, man, as a a top-level coach, I should be able to get more out of these kids than I am getting. Right, and so where's the pro- Where's the disconnect here? Right. And that's when I knew that I needed something else, and I didn't know what that thing was. But that's when I started to study Napoleon Hill, right? And that, I knew that if I could bring something to, you know, to the young kids, where it was, they had a chance to look at their own, um, you know, whatever it was that they're doing. It really doesn't matter what you're doing, right? Right. These young kids are never going to have to wonder what. If these principles are going to work in a certain situation, they work in right. all situations. Right. right. And so I just look at this thing and, 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 and think that a young kid is going to be it, – it, it amplifies the goodness that they're bringing out of themselves. Right. And so it's a chance for them to write down – writing causes thinking. So I'm writing down the things that I want. And I'm, I'm working it through this process of, of this – this training, this dream training, mm-hmm. and so it, it, it just it, it organizes things so well for a young person. It's in a language that they can understand. It's in a language that their mentors can understand, right? And it right. just it just shows there is super power in these words, in this language, in this book. Now, I don't need to tell anybody who's read Think and Grow Rich that that's the case. They all know that. <laughs> Right, right. They all know that. Right, exactly. But young people, they haven't had a chance to read this book yet for the most part. And so what an excellent, yeah, the success principles work whether you're kicking a soccer ball, throwing hoops, uh, wrestling, kicking someone's butt in martial arts, whatever it is. And so apply them, apply them. Might as well if you're going to want to be a, a good athlete, great athlete, do your best. you got to use the success principles along with your natural, natural God-given talents. And if you just have your God-given talents, but you don't apply the success principles, you're not going to get the most out of those talents. And so amazing. 
Uh, now, uh, Napoleon Hill has been a big influence, a major influence in the writing of Dream Training. Uh, why is the philosophy so relevant to everyone today, but even specifically for young people today? Well, I just uh, I think there's a lot of distractions here. You know, there's a lot of focus on things that aren't important. You know, yes. and I just know that you, you. I've heard you talk about this. We've got sixty-five thousand thoughts a day. Most of them are the same thoughts we had yesterday. <laughs> right. And unless I'm and unless I'm bringing in new, you know, I needed to set the bar higher for myself. Right. right? And so once I started to do that with 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 success principles then things started to become a little bit clearer here for me. And I know that they will be for a young person. Right? Right. It's, t- you can't, it's tough to argue with, 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 with these ideas, right, about having a dream, building self-confidence, surrounding yourself with the people that can help you to achieve that dream, really going into, you know, the power of, of your subconscious mind. I mean, we call it soul power in the book, but it's just this, it's this running current it's the same side of me that is the same side of you, Tom, that is the same side of everyone. Right? The best part of us are, are the things that we can't see. Right? right. So I, I think once you once you lay it out like that, it makes perfect sense. And then, you know, the proof is in is in the results that you get, right? So I think uh, you know, I think that the young kids really get a lot out of this. At least right. the ones that I've been able to, you know, to work with over the course of just trying to figure it out over the last three years. Nice. And this must be a, a real benefit or a real blessing for the parents of the young kids that you're working with. Because uh, sometimes, you know, if, if your parents try to teach you success principles, it's like, yeah, that's just dad or mom right. talking again. But if somebody who's relatable, younger, cool... Well, you're somewhat cool. Uh, you know, tells them the same thing. They're like, "Wow, that Colin's brilliant." Right. Uh, <laughs> and I, so it, exciting what you're doing because you could be opening a door that was closed to parents, but could be open right. to you because you're a little bit cooler than their parents. Right, and uh, you know, it's funny you say that, and that's that's been the case, and uh, for as long as I've been coaching, right, is that I'm showing the young kids how to be, you know, how to how to you know, how to be the best that they can be, you know, and at that time it was just the soccer side of things. But the parents, you know, they're trying to tell their kids the same thing, but, man, there's just, there is, there is no, there's no synergy here. And it, it's like my study of coaching young kids um, really was just about, hey, I'm trying to figure out more about me, right? Because it's the understanding of me that it's going to lead to the results in my life. And it's the same for you, and it's the same for these young kids, right? But once they start to understand, the most important person, uh, really, to a, a, an 8- to 14-year-old is someone outside the family, right. right? Coach, teacher, mentor, minister, you name it, boys and girls right. club instructor. So I think... I just, I had it, it was a gut feeling, but I knew that something had to be, you know, something had to, had to bring something to the table here so that we could tie these three things together, young person, coach or mentor, and then family system that would really be moving in the direction that they want, right? They want what's best for their son or daughter, so don't I. These kids want something good for themselves, they just don't know what that is, so... This helps you to discover it and helps you to work it through to completion. Exactly. And and it's sad that it's that way, that, you know, kids kind of sometimes tune out their parents and get their advice from outside world. But when it's reliable advice, proven, time-tested, and these aren't mm-hmm. Colin Gilmartin's principles. These are, like, time-tested Yeah. Universal principles. It's not like what's that Colin telling our kids? It's but, hey man, this is at a hundred million copies sold of this book, and you know a million millionaires. I'm not right. teaching them anything you don't want me to teach them, and right. uh, I think that's so important. I think you'd get pretty well carte blanche from uh, parents when you're teaching the kids these things because they may try, be trying to teach them this, but their kids are 
ignoring them like a lot of them do with their parents, right. like I used to do with my parents, right. you know. And so it's uh, so exciting for parents, I imagine, that, wow, not only are they learning to play soccer, but they're getting some little bit of extra uh, success principles and philosophies of life along with their kicking the ball training. And uh, that's more than what parents hope for or pay for when they send their kids to a soccer camp. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, I'm telling the young kids stories of Henry Ford at at the soccer field. And, I mean, there were some, man, I I just can see the light bulb go off in these young kids' minds. I remember I remember trying to show a young kid how to kick a ball up and try to keep it up with his feet or his thighs or his head. And after a couple of times, the young kid says to me, Coach, this is impossible. <laughs> so I, so practice comes to a screeching halt. I bring all the young kids in. I said, listen, I said, those that think they can do do something and those that think they can't do something are both usually right. right? And, and then I send them away for a little bit, and a young boy comes back to me and he says, Coach, Say that thing again that you said. So I repeated it. And then he comes back and he says, so, Coach, what you're saying is nothing is impossible. And I said, you know what? That's that's it. You have it right there, that one moment. Nothing is impossible. Right. And if, but it uh, is if you don't think it is, for sure. Right, right. And that's a powerful message to get across to someone. Nothing is impossible. Uh, right. If you focus your 60,000 thoughts and your 24 hours a day on it, anything can be done. And there's not enough time now to think of examples of things that people never thought could be done, would be done, ever be done, and got done just because someone was would never accept no and they just pounded their subconscious right. until it showed them the answer. Uh, we we know Thomas Edison and the light bulb that so many people know about, 10,000 right. failures, but... Yeah. You know, eventually his subconscious is like, okay, this this dude's never given up. We got to give him the secret because you know he's not going to give up, and that's what your subconscious is like. You know, you feed it enough of the same message, it's going to be like, okay, we got to go do this because this guy's annoying us here, and we got to go prove him uh, right. And oh, we so, think about so, it, Tom. What's the power? Of the, the power of, uh, of repetition, right? And these affirmations. I, you know, I remember back when I was a young kid. My mom had started to. We had some affirmations posted here, but I'm not quite sure. You know, I didn't know what I was doing, right? I didn't know what the importance of this was. I didn't know that, you know, that I become what I think about all day long, right. And that's the message that we're trying to give you, clear, concise, and very precise. Right? You and I become what we think about all day long. Right. So, and so focus those thoughts, otherwise you may not be becoming what you want because your thoughts right. are not going to get you there. So very, very powerful. Uh, the book is uh, available for sale on Amazon.com. Yes. Nice. So uh, Kindle and... Publish printed copy too. Kindle, uh, Kindle and paperback. And paperback. Ooh, all right. You're gonna send me an autographed copy of the uh, paperback. Of course, right? of course. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, excellent. And so the best way I think for people to find you, where they can really get the feel for the real Colin, the real deal, Colin <laughs> Gilmartin, is on Facebook. You are active on there. You share yeah. a lot of cool things on there. So Facebook.com, but just look for Dream Training Systems, and uh, right. you'll find Colin. And uh, Colin lives his real life on Facebook, all the cool things he does that yeah. him and Carol do. And, uh, geez, I get tired just watching your Facebook posts sometimes. <laughs> you doing so many things. <laughs> So I'm living through you uh, a lot of times, like, oh, I wish I could have gone to that concert. And, oh, wow, look at where he went now. Right. And so, so. What, he's uh, getting married at the biggest rock and roll wedding of, in all, right. of all time? Right. Like, oh, man. <laughs> How does that do funny. Know it? It's it's funny, Tom. It's like I hear, you know, I, I, I'm listening to Napoleon Hill and I'm reading and I'm listening to Bob Proctor and I'm, uh, you know, and I and I want to see how these things work in my life, right? So I start to raise the bar really high. Like, I, you know, I'm going to meet the 
the people that make the music that I love. Mm-hmm. So getting a chance to work with, you know, w- w- with the guys from other lives. And 10% of the proceeds of this book is, gonna, is going to um, uh, a nonprofit initiative called Life by Music, where we're putting musical instruments into the hands of the young kids that can't afford it. I'm going to teach them and show them how to play this music beautifully, their instruments, and who knows what's going to happen with that. But I know that music certainly has enriched my life, and uh, along with the book, we're going to share we're going to share the joys of music with you know with with everyone that participates in this. So it's a, it's a nice uh, it's a nice synergy here. Beautiful synergy, beautiful synergy. Well. Uh... I think we could probably chat for about six or seven hours. <laughs> and I don't think anyone would listen, but we could do it easily, no problem at all. Uh, but uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing thank today. Uh, I'm rushing home to open my Kindle so I can start reading the book and compare it to the one I have from a few years ago and get re-excited about your uh, your purpose. I think your purpose is with young people. When I heard you speak about it, like your face was like glowing. Uh-huh. You had a smile so wide. You become a kid all over practice. again, just trying to get back into this. Right. And so, uh, thank you so much, uh, parents, young people, whoever is listening. Buy the Teachers, book. coaches, mentors, you name it. Right? This you is a benefit. I, I And I tell you that the amount of adults that have come to me and says, Colin, you know, uh, it's not just for kids is what they're saying. So the adults have been picking up things out of this. And, of course, you know what happens with that. They just they see the results in their life, and, you know, that's the name of the game. I'm going to, Tom, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put ten books in the mail to you for mm-hmm. uh, anyone that we can give them away to, anyone that's working with a young kid, has kids, or, um, you know, anyone. Anyone, anyone, and and even if it's your own kids, because maybe your kids right. might, they might tune you out, but they might love the book, and it's a way to get the message you want to get to your kids through your book, and parents shouldn't care where the message comes from as long as they agree with the message and, yeah. you know, practice it themselves, and so, yeah, anybody that's working with any kids, your own or others, you know, get them the book, tell them about the book, get their parents to buy the book, get them to use their lunch money to buy the book, whatever it takes, get them to buy the book. Right. And if you're in New Orleans and you want to get, and you want to be part of a delivering 75,000 books to, to every young person in New Orleans, I want to speak to you. And that dream, as we know, is totally possible because you believe it. And uh, so because you believe it, that makes it possible. And so... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to get on the bandwagon. I am going to uh, help you get to that spot. So uh, amazing. Thanks for your time today, Colin. I appreciate you, it. You got me all excited. and you know, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a freaking motivational guy, you know. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. again, Tom. Let's talk real soon. Amazing. Thanks so much, Colin. I appreciate it. Have yourself an amazing day. Will do. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Journey to Success Radio. If you or anyone you know would like to be interviewed for the show, email Tom at TomTooTall.com for details.